What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. So guys, one of the most controversial topics in all of watch collecting has got to be limited editions and special edition watches. Big money, limited supply, but is it really all worth it in the end? It's 2.10 p.m. Let's get down to business. Okie dokie, limited editions, special editions. I think most of my viewers already know how I feel about these. Generally speaking, I don't like them. But yeah, as I kind of alluded to at the beginning of the episode, big money, limited supply, these watches tend to cost more, but they don't really deliver in the whole value department. And then all it really does nowadays is incentivize scalpers. Now ultimately, when we're exploring what you should or should not buy and what is or is not worth it, you know, that's mostly subjective. Everybody has different preferences and everyone has different spending habits. But the more I thought about this whole limited edition, special edition conundrum, uh, I kind of found myself breaking it up into three categories. Relevant interest, tangible upgrade, and total ripoff. And I'm gonna tell you what I mean by these three categories. Now again, I need to reiterate where and how things are categorized for you might differ from the way I see things and that's fine. You know, this is totally subjective. But let's explore this a bit further. In my opinion, one of the most valuable limited edition categories has got to be the relevant interest category. And that's because it has to do with you. Let me give you an example, okay? Seiko very recently released the 5KX Brian May edition. Now, if you are one of Brian May's biggest fan, or let's say you're like the most die-hard queen fanatic, then absolutely that watch would be worth spending the extra money to get, right? I mean, that is a very relevant interest to you. And yes, that watch will probably fetch higher prices on the secondhand market, and uh, you know, Seiko's probably even selling it at a premium. So uh, yes, assuming that you are the biggest Brian May fan and you love all the music he made with Queen, spending a bit extra to get that watch on your wrist will probably bring you a bit of added value and a ton of enjoyment. So there, I would say it's absolutely worth it. But there is a kind of dark side to this category, and I'll explain with another example. An example personal to me, a heartbreaking story. Story. I'm a huge Ultraman fan, okay? I grew up watching all the old episodes of Ultraman. I absolutely loved it. Um, I'm just, you know, Godzilla, Ultraman, King Kong, all of that. Huge fan. Now, when Omega recently, like within the last couple years, reissued the Ultraman Speedy, uh, I had to have it. I jumped on it. That is me and like everyone else. But yeah, the site practically crashed upon release and many, many enthusiasts, myself included, were left with the disappointing prospect of being added to a wait list. The worst part was immediately seeing scalpers and resellers selling their allocations on the secondhand market. Uh, it was infuriating because it was clear that a lot of people just jumped on this, immediately ordered one just to flip it after the fact and rub it in our faces. Now, believe me, guys, it is absolutely not a coincidence that I use used Seiko and Omega for my examples because, uh, yeah, they're the biggest offenders when it comes to overusing limited editions and special editions. It seems like everything they release nowadays is limited. Wow. But let's move on to the next category of limited and special edition watches. I call this tangible upgrades. Now, this is kind of clear cut, very well defined. We all kind of know what falls into this category. Better movements, new functions, uh, higher valued materials, maybe, you know, precious metals. Actual scarcity, okay? Because let's face it, a lot of limited editions aren't really that limited. Pretty much these watches are just objectively more impressive, more limited, than their non-limited variants. Now, although this category is very easily defined, unfortunately, it seems like this is the least common category when we're looking at special and limited edition watches. The fact of the matter is, most limited editions and special editions are just very basically cosmetic. And again, a lot of them aren't even limited at all. But off the top of my head, a really good example of a tangible upgrade limited edition would be a Doxa Sub 200T, a watch I don't really talk about too much on this channel, but a really cool dive watch. Now this limited edition variant is hyper limited, hyper scarce at only 13 made and uh, yeah, about 70,000 US dollars a pop. Now this watch is solid yellow gold. What's funny is to 
keep things in perspective, I think the stainless steel variant actually looks nicer and you can get one for about 4,900 US dollars. So yeah, very, very, like a lot more expensive, this limited edition, but at least they're making it hyper limited and at least there is, you know, a higher valued material going into that product, solid yellow gold for a big beefy uh, cushion cased, you know, dive watch like that. I get it. Um, would I spend $70,000 on it? Probably not. Oh my God. My forehead looks like it's made out of solid precious metal. Look at that. Guys, it's like 100 degrees in my office right now and I can't turn on the AC when I film because then there's gonna be a buzzing noise and everybody will complain in the comment section. Listen, I cleaned up my beard, I got a hair trim. I can't be perfect, okay? One thing is gonna go well and then the rest is just gonna be a train wreck. We can. We, we can accept that nowadays. And speaking of train wrecks, let's move on to probably the most common category when we're looking at limited and special editions, and that would be the category I like to call total ripoff. Let's face it, most limited editions nowadays are total ripoffs. Seiko, I'm looking at you. Okay, I love your watches, but let's face it, most of your limited edition releases probably shouldn't be. Here's what I mean. I have a few more examples. Okay, the Seiko International Edition Presage Automatic SRP D36J1, limited to 8,000 pieces. Another one, the Seiko Prospects Dawn Gray Europe Only Limited Edition Turtle SRP D01K1 and the Samurai SRP D03K1, 2,000 pieces each, so a bit more limited than that 8,000 presage. Uh, but again, we're talking about like, uh, dial colors and bezel combinations, they're really not that special. Which brings me to the next example, the Seiko Prospects Marine Master SBDX021 Green, a beautiful watch. I watch, I absolutely wanted to buy, uh, but again, I just don't think it's worth that premium price for just a random colorway. It's just, I don't know. I, you might see it differently than me, but this is my episode and I'm categorizing these as total ripoffs. Seiko just seems to be an expert at releasing a watch with like a certain colorway variant, making it limited, incentivizing a whole bunch of scalpers to buy all their units, and then, you know, they just call it a day. And again, Omega does this too. But again, with very, very minimal changes to these watches, we're talking about bezels and dial colors. Uh, these are exactly the same watch that you can buy in non-limited variants, but you're gonna be spending a whole lot of money on them. So is it worth the extra money? I say no, absolutely not. So okay, those were my three categories when we're looking at limited editions or, and or special editions. I've kind of mashed those together. So should you spend the extra money on these limited editions and special edition watches. Well, I guess kind of only you can assess that for yourself. Generally speaking, I'm gonna stick to my guns and say no. Uh, there are a few exceptions, of course. I actually own one limited edition that I can think of off the top of my head, and it's the Seiko Presage for Yugashiki. Uh, that dial is just, it was just too gorgeous and too detailed to pass up. But again, I don't know if it's worth like a huge amount of extra money on the secondhand market. I just, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd buy it at an immense premium. So yeah, I really do hope this breakdown helped you out. And of course, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Where do you lie when it comes to special editions, limited editions, premium prices, and scalpers? It seems like all of this goes hand in hand. So please leave me that comment and I'll see you in the comment section. And as always, thank you so much to my channel members making it possible for us to make six pieces of content a week for you guys. If you wanna join the channel, please hit that join button next to the subscribe button, $4.99 a month gets you six pieces of content a week plus access to the members only discord chat we talk about uh, weightlifting food cars film uh, movies everything honestly I'll also watches. I should probably mention that. We also talk about watches there. I, I can't do any of this without my members. The editors, thank you so much as well. Um, yeah, we can't do anything without you guys. We don't use Patreon. We get all of our support from the uh, members only certified 
T3 bots. And if you want to go above and beyond supporting the channel, please check out the affiliate links in the description below. It's pretty much everything you need if you're a watch collector, watch toolkits, watch winders, a whole bunch of really cool watch straps and modern watches. But if you're more of a vintage guy, check out the number one place to buy affordable vintage luxury watches, www.thetimetellershop.com. Everything there is handpicked by me, serviced with a one-year warranty. Again, click the links in the description below. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with everyone you know. I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller, and always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Uh... I'm overheating.